still ain't hold steady. Hey, I hope so. I think maybe we'll be okay. Hello, hello, friends and family, and welcome to another edition of Liveish at Fiveish with Pastor Lauren. As we, I need to plug that in. As we open up the book, look into the book of James. Praise the Lord. It's a little book. It's a little short book, and one shorter still is the book of Jude. We'll jump into that one next. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, as we tangle with the brothers. <laughs> but check out the brothers over here. Hey, I'm hoping that today is finding you guys alive and well and full of faith in the name of Jesus. And uh, doing okay. We're continuing to lift up our brother Brian Pierce right now. We're just asking for fervent prayer for him. Um, as he is still undergoing some complications or recovering from the complications that he had had. And he had a few blood clots that they were, uh, that went, one went to his lungs and another was in his leg that they were able to get, I believe. I haven't heard uh, yeah, anything yet today. Um, but during the process, his, as they were going in to get that, his heart had stopped and they had to resuscitate him. And, um, bring him back so we're praying hard and heavy for him and for his healing and for the Lord just to uh, bring him through that okay so everybody join with me in prayer continually for him and, and uh, we just give you thanks in advance and I just want to say welcome 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 thanks for joining me today I had to stop in the middle of my work here you know it's good to get scrap gathered, gathered together get all a mess you know and, uh, and I'm throwing that all on the trailers. We're coming, trying to get our building straightened out. Um, Maria and I have a have a building that we've had, and, and uh, we're looking to move along on that thing. Anyway, I'm coming to get some of the mess cleared up. And I had an engine right there in the middle of the yard. I had to take it out of an old Jeep, an old blown engine. Boy, I wrestled with that thing for two hours yesterday trying to get it loaded on my trailer. I didn't have a cherry picker or anything. What they call an engine hoist is a cherry picker. Look at my hands. Ew. <laughs> they're, they're clean enough not to leave fingerprints on my Bible. I wiped them down, but they're still stained. A little dirt. A little dirt don't hurt. Come on. Come on, a little dirt's good for you. <laughs> but anyway... Um, here I am trying to load that thing. I got it all done. And in the midst of the storms, as the storms came yesterday evening, and then the rain commenced to come down on me, so I had to run in the car real quick, wait for that to stop, and then come back to it and try to get it back quick. And I mean that thing was going an inch at a time. It's probably easily 400 pounds. And I'm uh, trying to bring it up an incline, you know. And <laughs> uh, boy, yeah, this is a lot of fun. But... Uh, Anyway, I got her loaded, and then went this evening to get the thing delivered to the scrapyard, you know, and that and all the other junk we had, and they turned me away. They said, nope, got to have the oil drain to get rid of the oil pan, and, and it's sitting on top of the oil pan, so I've been working for the last 30 minutes just to flip it over. <laughs> Boy, I like trying to flip an elephant. Well, it wasn't so big, but it's pretty heavy, and it's been a trick. Well, anyway, we got her done. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to slide this over and hopefully I'll be able to see anybody commenting there. <laughs> you know where I'm at. Uh-oh. Yeah, the side of the building's telling on me. Hey, Mom, how you doing? It's a mess, too. So, hello, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. No doubt about it, and it's always a humbling experience for me as everybody tunes in. It just gets my heart. I, I'll tell you the honest truth of it. Well, not to waste any more of your time, I do want to say one more thing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. If it's your birthday, do yourself a favor and receive that free gift that God has given in His Son, Jesus, if you haven't yet. If you have, good for you. Welcome to the family. You know what it's like already. It's a blessed assurance, no doubt about it, to know that Jesus is yours. Well, it's a good thing. Good. I'm glad to hear that you're doing great, Mom. And it's good to see you guys. Hey, all right. So we're going to jump on in now into James chapter 2. James just lays it out. Just puts it out. See, 
It's always good to listen to him. He says, My brethren, do not hold your faith in our glorious Lord Jesus with an attitude of personal favoritism. But what's he saying? <laughs> hey, Mamiya, good to see you, sweetheart. It says, Don't hold your faith in an attitude of personal, personal favoritism. For if a man comes into your assembly with a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, and there has also come in a poor man in dirty clothes, and you pay more attention or special attention to the one who is wearing the fine clothes and say, you sit up here in this good place, in this nice lavish seats and easy access and more, and you know, it's right next to the AC and the heater. <laughs> well, you stand over there to this other, to the poor man. You sit here in this good place to the, to the rich man and you say to the poor man, you stand over there and you sit down by my footstool. Oh, that's no way to be, no way to be. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil motives? Oh, let us never, never look upon the outward appearance of men as and to have the eyes of Christ and to know that God looks upon the hearts of men. Listen, my beloved brethren, did not God choose the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Is it not the rich man who oppresses you and personally drags you into court? Uh, the poor man couldn't, couldn't hardly do it even if he wanted to. It takes a little bit of money to do that. And do they not blaspheme their fair name by which you have been called? If, however, you are fulfilling the royal law, according to the scripture, you will, what? Love your neighbor as yourself. And you are doing well. If you're doing this, you're doing well. Oh, God, let, us, let that be a prayer in our heart. To, Father, help us to love our neighbors. We love ourselves. It's always a tricky thing. I know. I have my own challenges as well. And continually praying, oh, God, put me in the right heart and spirit. In the name of Jesus, we can do it with him. God's all things are possible. But if you show partiality, you're committing sin and are convicted by the law of transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. For he who said, Do not commit adultery, also said, Do not commit murder. <clears throat> now if you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, that is even hatred in your heart, and you won't forgive, since you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, and so act, as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be merciless to one who has shown no mercy, or mercy triumphs over judgment. What use is it then, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? What use is it if he has faith and no works? Can faith save him? Or if a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warned, and be filled. And yet you do not give them what is necessary for the body. What use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. Wait a minute. Can faith alone save you? You know, there's so many places in the Word that says yes. There's so many religions and faiths in the world that say yes. All we need, We're only saved by faith through grace, right? Well, it's a faith if we have proper faith. That's the thing. And if the God that we're serving is the right? You haven't created in your mind another, another God that you're more comfortable with than the true God of the Bible. Then the evidence will be that you are saved by faith through grace unto good works. Unto the fulfilling of the righteousness of God. So if somebody would say, I'm saved, but then nothing in their habits, nothing in their attitude, nothing in who they are changes, then you can know that that faith is false. It's false. And they're only um, a religion of words. That's all it is. It's faith unto good works. The good works are just a testimony that what's happening inside you by the power of the Holy Spirit is the real deal. That's sound salvation. No doubt about it. Amen? Okay, so he's not saying necessarily the work saves us. 
but the works is a testimony of our salvation. Okay? You believe that God is one. You do well. Make sure I... Okay. 18. We'll go back over that. But someone may well say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Because, again, even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. So I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. Remember that. You believe that God is real, that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. Their believing is not going to save them either. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Let our faith move us to righteousness. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? He believed he had faith, and then he moved forward. You see that faith was working with his works, and as a result of the works, faith was perfected. <laughs> Amen. Listen, you need to lay that thing down in your life that is against God. You know it's against God. Whatever it is, you need to lay it down and abandon it forever, even to your hurt. And you say this in your heart, even if it kills me, God, I'm never going to touch that again because I recognize it's against you. Will he come and give you power to overcome that? Yes, he will. But you'll still endure the challenge You'll still endure the trial. You'll still endure the suffering in the flesh. You'll still have to enter into the battle over that. But he will help you through it. There's no doubt about it. He promises to do that. And all that trust in the Lord <laughs> shall be That faith was working with his works. Let's go. Not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar. You see that faith was working with its works. And as it works, faith was perfected. And the which says, And God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God, because he moved forward, even to his own hurt. His only son, he was about to offer up all his love. And in the same way was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Amen. Chapter 3, there's uh, so much there to dive into just in that little bitty chapter in James. It's so good stuff. Oh, it's good stuff. You gotta love it, every piece of the Word of God, amen. And we just, uh, and it cleanses us. <laughs> cleans our heart, not the outside of the cup, it cleans the inside, the inside, and helps moves up, move us to power, power in the Holy Spirit, and power to new life. This is the power, and this is the call to action that I'm trying. Anybody that's listening, not me, but really the Word. The Word is to call us to action, to move in the way of righteousness, on the narrow path, to continue on in Him. You might be stuck right where you are, not able to overcome these hills, so these little mountains that are set before you, these obstacles of uh, whatever is in your heart mind or soul or physical actions with your habits and all those things but God will be more than an overcomer in you if you will rise up in obedience and truth with him amen this is the thing that we can do we can cry out to him call for a right heart and spirit and move and the word remembering why the word of God says that those who cease from sin will suffer in the flesh they will suffer in the flesh because we have ceased from sin, and you know what? He is worthy. He is worthy of every suffering. But he also went and suffered on the cross for us, a far greater pain 
a far greater terror, a far greater trouble. So he's worthy to get in. And this is the cross that you are called to carry. That we will turn and deny ourselves of all of those things, deny our flesh of all of the things that are against God, to drop it right where it is and to follow him right at the altar of your heart. I'm calling you guys to the altar of your heart today to enter in to the challenge, to enter into the battle with him. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Thanks for all the love and the likes out there, guys. I appreciate you with all my heart. Keep pushing those like and love buttons and all those things because it makes the algorithms crazy and they have to they have to uh, pay attention. It forces the computers to pay attention to the message and it'll put it out there a little more. If you guys would share these stories too, if it's something that's helping you and helping your heart, uh, I truly pray every day that everything that we're doing here on the airwaves, whether it be a sermon or if it be just a little Bible reading, that it be something that God is doing. He's sending those seeds out. And that is his word that shall not return void, but it will do the thing that he intends it to do. If you believe that, send this word out, share it, push the love, likes, and all of those things, and tell everybody about this little thing. This is a great little meeting time. We can come together just to spend a few minutes just to love each other and love the Lord and learn a bit more about Him as we sit at His feet and let Him correct us. Put it on this, put us on that corrected, that path of correction. <laughs> so I'm trying to say abity, abity, abity. Uh, anyway, here we are. I guess I'm going to jump out there and finish this old engine and try to get that oil pan off so I can get a payday coming on over here. All right, well, I love y'all. Thank you for your time, and God bless you, and may He keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May He be gracious to you and give you peace in the name of the Prince of Peace, our Shalom, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Amen. And may He empower you to enter into the battle and to have courage to drop those things that we know we need to let go of. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh yeah, and remember, above all else, Love each other and trust in Jesus. Okay, thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.